Should NASCAR consider pushing back the start time of the Coke 600 to accommodate Kyle Larson? Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Kyle Larson made great time going from Indianapolis to North Wilkesboro on Sunday night for the NASCAR All-Star Race. I mean, he did it in really good time, such good time that NASCAR really didn't even have to push back the race. They did. They pushed it back 16 minutes from 8.14 to an 8.30 start time. And Kyle had so much time, he was able to go sit down with the Fox pre-race show and talk to them about, you know, what he'd been doing at Indianapolis, the upcoming race at the All-Star Race, and how he thinks he's going to do in the 500-600 double. They honestly didn't need it. He made such good time. So now the question is, if we approach the Coke 600 on Sunday night and Kyle Larson isn't going to be there on time, should NASCAR delay the start of the race to accommodate Kyle Larson's travel? The easy answer is yes, absolutely. If it's like 15 to 20 minutes, sure, just push the start back a little bit. This is a sport that never gets started on time. They have no idea what time they're supposed to start. They have a time that says that they're supposed to start. They very rarely ever hit it. So who cares if we just push it back another 15 or 20 minutes? But for whatever reason, Pete Pistone from SiriusXM NASCAR, he and I do not see eye to eye on literally anything. And that's not because I'm a foot and a half taller than him. It's just because we have different ideas on the direction of the sport. And my paycheck doesn't come from the sport contrary to what the comments do say i do not get paid by nascar but pete pistone said moving start time for the all-star race tonight to accommodate larson is fine since it's an exhibition race okay i agree with that it simply can't be done next week for the 500 600 double why why not so when somebody pushed back pete says doesn't matter the integrity and credibility of the sport supersedes what is no doubt a cool storyline but a sidebar to the main story of a points race so, so this, this is, is where we're, we're going to draw, draw the line in the sand, sand about the credibility, credibility of the, the sport. sport. Okay, that's where you want to draw the line. Why don't you draw the line in this same race where they just added a four stage in just because they could. They're like, oh, it breaks it up evenly into quarters, four 100 lap segments. Okay, but why? Why don't you just do that to every race then? Doesn't make any sense to me there. Why isn't the Daytona 500 broken up into four 50 lap segments? Why isn't that? Why does this race have a halftime break where they bring all the cars down pit road, stop them, and have a moment of silence for the troops? That that doesn't hurt the credibility of the sport where we just randomly are adding in halftime shows now. And hats off to the troops. Thanks for your service. But why are we stopping this in the middle of the race when we could do this at the pre-race? The same sport that just added a 13th driver into the playoffs because they didn't want to penalize a team and kick them out of the playoffs? The same sport that didn't investigate Penske for their cheating scandal at Richmond or RCR for their cheating scandal at Richmond, but then hammered Michael Waltrip Racing for their cheating scandal at Richmond. Yeah, no, I don't think this is the time to draw the credibility, you know, line in the sand here. I think it's totally fine. And don't get me wrong. Don't delay the race by an hour. No, you can't do that. That's absurd. But if we're talking 15 to 20 minutes, yeah, delay the race. They have a ridiculous, extravagant pre-race ceremony where they are like reenacting war scenes out there. Just add another scene in. Drop the cable cam onto the ground again. Turn the sprinklers on. Kill the lights. I don't really care how you do it. Just delay the race or just straight up be like, hey, Kyle Larson's coming from Indianapolis. We would like him to be a part of this race. It's a really cool storyline for motorsport, for NASCAR, for IndyCar. We're going to give him time to get here. The Hendrick Motorsports plane made the trip, the team plane, made the trip from Indianapolis to Charlotte in an hour and two minutes last week. So assuming this race, the Indianapolis 500, ends around 4 o'clock, 4.15, somewhere in that time frame right there, Larson's easy, easily going to get to Charlotte in time. He gets on the plane uh, by 4.30, assume, you know, a 15-minute ride from the helicopter over to the airport. It takes an hour to get to Charlotte, another 15-minute ride over. He's there before 6 o'clock. Yeah, it's going to be tight for him, but it shouldn't be an issue. One issue that has arose, though, is it does appear that former President Donald Trump will be in attendance for Sunday's Coke 600. You can feel however you want about that. I'm not going to comment on it. The only thing I will say is keep politics out of sports. The unfortunate part about all of this is the amount of security around it. Because that's going to mess up Kyle Larson's travel plans now. Uh, yeah, him getting into the racetrack could be delayed. Him getting airspace clearance into the racetrack could be an issue. Obviously, it'll all be worked out beforehand. But the added security of having a former president there certainly does not help the effort in terms of trying to become or trying to make this a seamless process as much as it can be for Hendrick Motorsports and Kyle Larson. But at the end of the day, 
This is a great storyline for NASCAR. Yes, they should, if they have to delay it by 15 or 20 minutes, absolutely delay this race because the pop that Kyle Larson is going to get from the crowd when he gets out of that helicopter in the infield, like when Tony Stewart did it or Kurt Busch did it, is going to be absolutely massive. There's a chance this guy could win most popular driver. Everybody on the NASCAR side is behind Kyle Larson. Doesn't matter if you're a Toyota fan, Ford fan, Chevy fan. Everybody wants to see him do well. There's like this national pride from NASCAR fans that one of their own is going over to run the Indy 500. And for once, they sent the best driver that is on offer on the NASCAR side. That's not a slide at Tony Stewart. That's not a slide at Robbie Gordon, John Andretti, or Kurt Busch. But Kyle Larson is very much being viewed as doing this in the prime of his career. When Tony did it, he was very much in the prime of his career. But it didn't seem to have the same allure around it that Kyle Larson has. And when Tony did it, he had really good, really good race cars. Great opportunities. Chip Ganassi Racing, Joe Gibbs Racing. I mean, he had the best cars out there. He's the only driver to complete all 1,100 miles of it at that. But yeah, you have to you have to accommodate Kyle Larson for this. This is good for business. Any track promoter understands that, and Charlotte's going to want Kyle Larson to be in this show. People are going to this race to see what Kyle Larson can do. They're not going so not everybody's going solely to see what Kyle Larson does, but people do want to see what he can do, and it's worth the delay to have him there. So yeah, I'm really interested to see what people think about this. Let me know in the comments, would you delay or are you going to hold a hardline stance for this? Because honestly, I, I'm fine with either of your either opinion on either side. I just like to know if you are like hardline on it, why now do we draw the line? I get it. One driver is not bigger than the entire sport, but when your sport's looking to be on the uprise, it's better to have him. The headlines of NASCAR starting this race without Kyle Larson are going to be way worse than NASCAR delaying the start of this race by 15 or 20 minutes to accommodate Kyle Larson. I'll just say that. So let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.